Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a little string bending trick or technique that I picked up from learning Van Halen solos. And it's interesting because I've rarely ever seen uh, Van Halen fans actually do this right, or do it at all. I think most people don't know about it. And when it comes to the particular solos that Eddie did this in, people tend to do something, uh, they tend to do things differently whenever it comes to that part. And I've talked about this in the past, in some of my Van Halen solo lessons where it was applicable. So it's back there, it's buried in those lessons, but I thought I'd do a separate video talking about it. Now you don't have to be a Van Halen fan um, to appreciate this or to incorporate it into your playing. If you're a rock guitar player, or even a blues guitar player uh, for that matter, I think you'll find it interesting if you don't already know it. And I say blues because um, the licks that Eddie would incorporate this technique into, uh, they were always blues rock based licks. But I also want to call out that for these examples when I play the Van Halen licks, I'm going to do it in standard tuning. I know that most of the time Van Halen is tuned down one half step, but I'm going to do these in standard tuning just so there's uh, no confusion. All right, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Now I call this technique catch and release. And I don't know who coined that term, but I first heard it many years ago back in the 80s when I was learning to play lead guitar. Um, I also have this Van Halen tab book for their first album that I also picked up, uh, this would have been around the end of the 80s, which uh, kind of references it too. Um, but the book really doesn't adequately explain how to do it cleanly, which is very important and I'm gonna talk about that. So what it involves is bending one string, catching a second string in the bend, and then releasing the note from the first bent string so that now only the bent note on the second string is being played. Okay, I'm gonna go into more detail on this, don't worry. So again, catch and release. And probably the best example of this technique, and Van Halen did this in a few solos, is to bend up on the B string. In this case, we'll use the 15th fret of the B string. And then come down from the bend on the 14th fret of the G string. Now, in order to play this cleanly, and this is the critical part of this lesson, you have to silence the first bent string immediately after playing the note on the second string. If you don't silence that first string, the B string in this case, it's going to sound like this. So you see, it's not enough just to lift your pinky off that B string because your ring finger underneath has already naturally got hold of both the B and G strings. You have to silence that first string. So the way I silence that first note is right after I play the G string note, um, a finger on my right hand quickly touches the B string to stop it from ringing. Now watch again and see my right hand ring finger quickly touch the B string to silence it after I hit the G string note. Now it might feel more natural for you to use a different finger on your right hand to mute the note or stop it, like your middle finger, like this. So that's probably the best example of this technique, um, but as we move next into the specific Van Halen licks, you'll see some variants of this technique at play. Okay, so the first Van Halen lick comes from the song I'm the One and the very ending of the first solo. So right after Ed did this part with the whammy bar, kind of like this, He then goes like this. Okay, so let's let's focus on that first half where he does this. You can see he applies the same fingering we just used a minute ago, but of course it's in a different key. Now it's in D minor. And typically I see people just kind of ad lib during this part or do things like this. But again, here's the right way to do it. Okay, so example two is a bit different, and it comes from the song Bottoms Up off of Van Halen 2. And pay attention to the last two notes in here, but here it goes. Now most people will play it like this at the end as opposed to. So you can see in this case that we are bending up with one string uh, and we're using the high E string. And at the top of the bend, we switch to the B string. And again, that B string is naturally already bent up uh, roughly a full step too. 
and we are applying some uh, relatively wide vibrato to that B string note at the top of that bend. So once again, it's key that you silence that first note on the E string immediately after striking the B string with your pick. If you didn't silence it, it would sound like this. And I know that sounds kind of cool, but that's not what we're going for here, right? We want it to sound like this. Now I have two more Van Halen examples to show you which are in line with our first example. And this one comes from the song Ice Cream Man. So you know at the very end of the song after the solo where it goes back into the chorus, right? And Ed plays a few licks over it. Like, like he starts in with this. And then the next lick, the one in question, goes like this. So you can see it's very similar to the first example, but in this case you're bending up and coming down at the same fret, right at the 15th fret. And then the final example, which is the closest to the first one, um, also came from the song I'm the One, but this time the ending of solo two. So he goes like this. So again, you don't need to be a Van Halen fan to incorporate this technique into your playing. Um, but I do think it helps and it works best within the context of rock, blues, blues rock type, type licks, right? Especially pentatonic based licks. Uh, but experiment with it and have fun. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video on what I like to call the catch and release string bending technique. Uh, if you found it informative or helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will attempt to answer them as time allows. Until next time, rock on.